After missing out on the FCS playoffs narrowly two years ago, the Austin P. Governors step into uncharted territory with their first postseason appearance. New faces. Furman has done this playoff thing before. They sweat it out being a bubble team and find themselves making yet another appearance, this time on the road. New faces and old hands as the FCS playoffs come to Tennessee. Kickoff is next on ESPN3. What a day at Austin P in Clarksville, Tennessee, just north of Nashville. First postseason appearance ever. And what a turnaround it is for the Governors hosting Furman this afternoon in the opening round of the FCS playoffs. The winner of this one advances to next weekend. We'll get the number four national seed, Sacramento State. But we are in for a good one between Austin P and Furman this afternoon in Clarksville. Alongside former Georgia quarterback Hudson Mason, I'm Jonathan Yardley. Austin P, what a story. One in 47 over a five-year period. They broke a 29-game losing streak out here just two years ago. Now they're Ohio Valley Conference champions, Hudson, and they're opening the playoffs at home. What a moment. Yeah, and they bring in the number one scoring offense and defense in their division, but they have yet to see the triple option attack all season long like they'll see today from the Furman Paladins. For Furman, we've been wondering who's going to lead that option attack, and there's two options, and it turns out we're going to expect to see both Hamp Sisson and Darren Granger. You're a quarterback, Hudson. Yeah. Two quarterback system. Yeah, traditionally not a big fan when you got two quarterbacks. I usually think you don't have one quarterback. But what makes this unique is that Hamp is a little bit more of the thrower. Darren, a little bit more of the runner. He can kill you with his legs in the run game. So I think the, the challenge today for Furman offensively is how do you use those guys interchangeably without being too predictable? On the Austin P side, their quarterback change came way back in game two. Javon Craig stepped in due to injury and has really shined as the starter. Yeah, he sure has. you got to rush him smartly today as this defensive front for Furman. Keep him inside the pocket. Don't let him get outside. That's where he's killed teams all season long, extending plays. The Ohio Valley Conference champions, Austin P, their first postseason appearance, hosting Furman. What a matchup for you. We kick off from Tennessee next. Cool day, rain expected to continue throughout. But they have been looking forward to this for decades, quite literally. On the Furman side, second appearance in three years. And the Paladins traveled well. Long drive yesterday from South Carolina to Nashville. And they drove up here to Clarksville just this morning. Alongside Hudson Mason, I'm Jonathan Yardley. Five wide. Kentel Williams is at the very top of your screen as a wide receiver. Craig has time. Goes short to D'Angelo Wilson, their big play man. And he is looking for more. D'Angelo Wilson into Furman territory with the first down. On second down. Craig steps forward, looking to run. Runs behind Prince Mamadou. Gets a block, gets a first down. Finally dragged down at the 16. Josephus Smith, the big man, in as the fullback. Craig going to pass. Throwing. Touchdown, Austin P. Elijah Brown, the tight end. In the mood to party right now at Austin P. Leading 7 0. Hosting their first postseason game ever. Won their first conference championship in 42 years. Tying with Southeast Missouri State for the Ohio Valley title. They beat them head to head. And they put in uh, a significant bid and got the hosting rights and are trying to take advantage in the rain. They start from their own 19 after a dominant first possession. John Craig off play action, connects with Benico Harley for a Benico first down. The Hampsis in his first. Sequence under center. Back to throw, gets a rush, but plenty of room for Thomas Gordon who hauls it in. The first and 15, they go back to the flex bone. Sisson keeps and finds Devin Wynn with room to run. Dives forward inside the 15 and Furman is on the move. 
So here's a key kind of inside the game is is not only third down conversion where Furman's 0 for 2 today, but traditionally really good, but is is really red zone. Furman comes in eighth in the FCS, completing 90 or converting 91 percent of their red zone attempts. Sisson gonna keep looking for the corner, doesn't have it. Blown up in the backfield. Erskine Francis with a tackle. Grayson Atkins as close to automatic as they come. 11 for 12 this year. Lines up a 23-yarder out of the hold of Jack Harden. No problem knocking it through, and Furman is on the board. And unfortunately, we're going to have to wait and see how this all comes out because Lightning has struck within the eight-mile radius around the stadium, so the team's off the field, and we're going to have to wait at least 30 minutes before we resume this one. We're back and ready for action in the opening round of the FCS playoffs. Austin P7, Furman 3 as we get set to resume in the second quarter following our second lightning delay of the day. Dwayne Vaughn, a native of Clarksville. He said he'd be here this weekend anyway for Thanksgiving, and he winds up traveling here with his team, Furman. His grandpa can watch him coach this weekend. Nice touch. Javon Craig keeps it himself and has the first down across the 40. Hadn't made a third down conversion all game. They pick up a couple here on this drive. Sisson to throw, has numbers downfield, and wide open is Ryan Miller. Into Austin P territory, and Furman is on the move. And the holder, Jack Harden, is going to line him up from 59 yards away. Cordell Jackson is deep to return it if it stays on the field of play for Austin P. So watch out. Grayson Atkins from 59. Wide of the mark. It had the distance, but he pulled it left. A rare miss from 59. What a leg. But it's an empty trip down the field for Furman. He would have made that from 62. So intriguing as a storyline because Austin P, as a program, hits such depths. Right? 1 and 47 from 2013 into the 2017 season. Since then, 22 and 11, turned it around under Will Healy and trying to continue in Mark Hudspeth's first year. Underway in the second half. Grayson Atkins likes the win. This is going to be brought out. Questionable decision out of the end zone. And yet, Josh Alexander got to the 25. That was a lot of work for the same result as a touchback. <laughs> They're explaining to him just that. Again going to the air. Wilson is wide open in space. Has the first down and is out near midfield. Carving up this Furman zone at the moment. For D'Angelo Wilson, second straight catch. They do throw to Kentel Williams. He gets away from a man in the backfield and has space to run. Finally contacted to the ground inside the 30. Looked like what men have been a horse collar late there. From the 15, Craig to throw. Looking for Wilson, goal line, touchdown! Austin P comes out firing. 14 to 3 Govs if they can hit the extra point. Three running backs in that flex bone look for Furman. Reverse option. Pitch goes to win. He's hit immediately and dropped. Taylor in the backfield. He almost had a game changing pick earlier, and Trent Taylor picks up the TFL here. Third and long, four wide receivers for Furman. Jacaris Smith trying to apply pressure, and down goes Sisson. Whiteside and Sean Whittinghill got to him for the sack. So first down, and 16 is the number. Trying to set up the screen, and they do connect underneath. Kentel Williams has running room. Kentel Williams off to the races. And to the house for a Govs touchdown. Welcome to the FCS postseason, Austin P.
Austin P making its first trip to the postseason and making it a memorable one. Kentel Williams with the touchdown dash, but what caught our eye was what was behind Kentel Williams. How about Governor P? Look at the athleticism from the Governor P. I mean, what is that, a four-star recruit out of Clarksville, Tennessee, running down the sideline right there? He's a little early on the celebration, though. You're supposed to wait till the end zone. I mean, that, that, that guy, Governor P, is, has been through the ring. Oh, yes. That, that was the mascot when they went through a 29-game losing streak from 2013 to 2016. So I understand why he's the first one to run down the sideline when he got an 18-point lead. Not a lot of push-ups to do in those days. Dewan Bell on the return for Furman. Trying to get the Paladins back in it. Give him some life. He's decleated. What a hit. I'm just impressed Dewan Bell held on to the football. <laughs> All right, let's see what Furman can conjure here because offensively, again, they had momentum heading into the half. Short side option system with the fake. And then he takes a hit. Kendall Jackson comes up away with the ball. And it's a turnover. Playmaker all year, Cordell Jackson does it again. This is a guy with three defensive touchdowns, and he just swipes it away from Sisson. He, he's not a guy that just plays the pass. He's so active and so physical in the run. Can they go for the kill here? Craig with a shovel pass to Prince Mamadou. We barely called his name today, but he's into the clear. And inside the five, Austin P is rolling. Well, Prince Mamadou, the third string running back for this governor offense. Coach said he was a bit limited with his athleticism. Don't tell him that. Javon Craig steps up in the pocket. Just a nice little shuffle pass, get it down to his back. And Prince Mamadou takes it in. Austin P, in the blink of an eye, goes up three scores. And he has stayed as the punter. Gets this one away. Fair catch. Called for by Chizik. He bobbled it. Fallen on by Austin P. And the turnovers continue. There's a lot to prepare for as well going up against the Governors. Willis missed the big hit. Kentel Williams driving forward and finding the end zone. <laughs> Nope, they'll call him down just shy of it. Kentel Williams moving downhill after he bounced off the tackle. Well, Jordan more, Willis. More missed tackles in space, and that's been the theme too much today for the Paladins defense. Jordan Wilson misses the open tackle and into the end zone for six more. Kentel Williams. This third quarter has been one-way traffic. Austin P. 34, Furman 3. Clay Hendricks was a coach when Furman won the national FCS title in 1988. He was an offensive lineman on the team that went to the semis in 1985. And he'll watch Atkins try this field goal from 34 yards away. And a rare Oh, he tucked it in. Grayson Atkins pulled it off. Two for three on field goals today. And Furman has a few more points on the board. Harley at quarterback once again. Takes off running. Beats one man. Benico Harley finds six. Don't mess with the Governors. Sisson off play action, wants to go deep. Now he's found room to throw, and Erskine Francis says no. They'll give him the interception, third turnover of the day. Javon Craig and Austin P. first playoff game at home and a resounding victory. Governors 42 and Furman 6. Austin P is on to the round of 16. What a day in Clarksville, Tennessee. 42 to 6, the win for Austin P. 
for our entire crew braving the elements today. For my partner, Hudson Mason, I'm Jonathan Yardley in Clarksville, Tennessee. A reminder, all games airing on the ESPN Network, streaming live, and are archived in the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Austin P. 42, Furman 6. They started from the bottom. Now they're here. Austin P. gets its first playoff win.